There's no telling what these competitors will do in extreme rules. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is me, the real Jackstar here. And, um, today's a little different, I would say, of a video. Um, you're just seeing an AI match of two calls I made. I'll, you know, tell you kind of more later, but there's not really anything to say. Uh, continuing on, what I'm saying is, as you could see in the background and everything, and it's, uh, and the title of the video, it's an Extreme Rules, um, review. Now, last night on May 4th, 2014, we had Extreme Rules. And first of all, let me just give you my overall, like, rating for it. I give it, like, a 4.5 out of 5, because it was an extremely good show. So let me just tell you the match card from what I can remember. Alright, the kickoff show, which in my opinion was the best kickoff show in just forever. It was, uh... The WLC match between Hornswoggle and uh, El Torito. Now, at first, everyone thought that it was going to be complete bullcrap. But that match was so freaking entertaining. There was like a mini announcers, mini announcer table. Literally, tiny ladders, tiny tables, tiny like chairs, a small referee. Well, like, I'm not saying midget, I'm saying little person because I think that's offensive. Sorry. But uh, there were. A lot of puns in there, I would say. Um, but the match was overall good. Tables were going everywhere. Chairs were used. The little ladders and everything. It was very good. A lot of... It was just amazing, in my opinion. I really liked that. It was like the match of the night. Well, one of them. But let's continue on with the show. Um, another match that happened, I believe, was the beginning match, which was Cesaro versus Swagger versus RVD. Now, the match was okay. Honestly, it was okay. I was honestly thinking it was going to be Swagger versus Cesaro because they were in a rivalry. RVD just like came in, honestly. Um, but the match was okay. Honestly, it gets like a 3.5 out of 5. Um, not a lot of weapons were used. The only weapon that was mostly used, I would say, in that match were, um, was just a trash can. And it was elimination also, so that that was okay. If I was expecting elimination, I would expect RVD to be out first, so it was just Swagger and Cesaro. But Cesaro came out victorious, and the match was decent, I would say. Uh, like I said, 3.5. Um, let me think of more matches that came off the top of my head. Uh, Evolution versus The Shield. It was a good match also. That gets like a 4.2 out of 5, because that was a good match. Um, not, like, not a lot of weapons were used, honestly, but there was a lot of, like, outside stuff happening, because for some reason, it was, like, a regular match. Like, a regular, you know, free-on-free. -free. It wasn't, like, you know, uh, Extreme Rules version of it. It was just a normal free-on-free. -free. Three. Sorry, I have a lisp. And, um, another thing about it that was extremely entertaining had to be when, um, Orton, Triple H... Ambrose and Rollins went to like through the crowd and everything like that. Now I'm not sure if you guys saw, but when Rollins jumped and like went to like jumped into the barricade instead of onto Triple H, he it looked like he freaking hurt himself. Like he just broke his neck, honestly. And um, the second time, Ambrose not not Ambrose Rollins like leaped off of a big part from like the seating and everything like that. It was very amazing. Uh, the Shield came out victorious. 4.2 out of 5. It was a great match. Um, more matches to think of. Great. I'm, I'm already forgetting them. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Bray Wyatt versus John Cena um, in a steel cage. First of all, I, I would have been so better with a regular match. Because, first of all, like, um, for me to give it a rating, it was... A decent match. It wasn't really that entertaining. I'm giving it like a 3.5. I'm giving it a 3.5, just like you know the other match. Um, but anyways, like the match was it. It was okay. First of all, Daddy, we should have fought better, honestly, because like when Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan faced the Usos in the steel cage, you saw that Harper and Rowan were climbing the cage. Wouldn't you have think that it was a bad idea? That's like strike one. Second of all, strike two. Cena was extremely stupid during the match. Extremely stupid. He, every time he would try to escape, Harper and Rowan were right there. Do you honestly think that two psychopaths that are against you would let you just, oh, just go ahead. Just like, you know, leave the steel cage. No. 
Because they actually, Harper, not, not Harper, Rowan literally pushed him back, same as Harper. So, and Cena just kept going, trying to get outside. Hello, you could pin the guy, you could, well, even with the door, it wouldn't help. But, here's strike free. Like, and this associates with the second strike. Cena trying to deal with the Wyatt family. First of all, like, Rowan I can understand. Harper, though, instead of, like, pushing them off or kicking them, he brought Harper into the steel cage. You're in the steel cage match. You're not supposed to bring the superstar into the cage. That makes the match now go from a 3.5 to a 3, because... 3, sorry. Because it was just like, oh, really? Really? I can understand, like, how WWE was doing that. You know, Rowan and um, Harper and, er, and uh, Rowan, Harper, and Wyatt, you know, all knocked out in the cage. I can understand that Cena was going to leave the cage. By the way, if I'm spoiling this for anyone, I'm sorry. Um, but from, it, it was, like, when Cena was about to escape slow, slowly, like, I knew from a fact that it wasn't going to end off that easily. Like, the match had had some pace or something like that. So, like, I, I said to myself, that the match can't be over just like that, just from, like, Cena just leaving. No. Next thing you know, boom, lights go out. And next thing you know, you hear in this deep, dark voice, He's got the whole world in his hands. And I'm saying to myself, oh my god, please tell me this is Sister Abigail. Because if it was, oh my gosh, that would have been so much better if they revealed Sister Abigail. But, um, no. It's some kid with a very either messed up microphone or Daddy Wee's really good with a soundboard. Because that, that distracted Cena made him want to go back into the, into the cage. Which a person totally wants to do. You could just push that kid, and then boom, you win the match. But no. He, he decided, oh, let me go back in. Bray Wyatt hits Sister Abigail. Not the little kid, I'm saying. Like, he hits the uh, finisher. And then boom, he wins. <sighs> and then later, after Paige and Tamina's match, um, the, like, you know, they had a promo a little bit of it. And that kid went through puberty, like, 50 times, because that voice is deep. He didn't even have a freaking microphone on him. And first of all, for anyone that's watching this right now, yes, I know that it's messed up like that, that his voice is supposed to be like that. I'm not that stupid. I know his voice is supposed to be like that. And I know that his voice isn't actually that, so back off. Anyways. Um, any more matches that I could think of? Any more matches? Oh! Alexander Rusev versus uh, Archer Van Xavier Woods. Of course, I would think after very exciting matches. It wasn't a good match. I, I really didn't care about it, honestly. Um, it was before the Evolution match. It was kind of obvious that uh, Rusev was going to win in the first place because you're going against two jobbers in the first place. In the first place, I say that a lot. But, like, it was kind of obvious that Rusev was going to win. What happened to Xavier Woods in that match? I understand that he kind of got suplexed and... You know, kicked in the face, but you know, he he left his partner. He he just left him. Our troop had to deal with that match for the, just the entire thing. Um, so that match was okay. I give it like a like a two. Honestly, it was not the greatest, but it was okay. Honestly, um, another match that happened that I forgot. Oh dang, I, I'm literally watching the match right now. Anyways, but um. The next match, which was, uh, I'm, I'm going around everywhere. I keep forgetting the match order. Um, Bandits Barrett versus, uh, uh, Big E Langston, or Big E. First of all, WWE, stop with your name changing. You're really killing it. You turned Big E Langston to Big E, which is bad. I, I, that's stupid. Bad News Barrett to, no, Wade Barrett to Bad News Barrett. Yeah, it was a joke. Really? Like, next thing you know, they're going to call John Cena Super Cena or something like that. But, like, really, you have to change his name to Bad News Bear? I know it's, like, a trendy thing, but seriously. And says Antonio Cesaro to Cesaro. Like, really? It's just stupid. Anyways, um, so, during that match, I wasn't really watching it. <laughs> 
But I do know that uh, Bad News Bear did win that match. And uh, game just got a little dark. Anyways. But yeah, we got a new champion. And I would kind of expect that to happen. Because, like, think about it. What's the point of having a huge tournament with eight superstars if you're not going to have a new champion? That superstar went through so much just to lose out of pay-per-view. Like, not really. That, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be best for business. Uh, Paige versus Tamiya Snooker. Oh, the Bad News Barrett match, I would give it like a... I, I didn't really watch it, so I'm not giving it a rating. I honestly didn't even know how it ended. Um, the second to last match of the night. Uh, Tamina Snuka versus Paige. Paige is obviously going to win. I doubt that they're going to give Tamina, like, an upgrade, honestly. Uh, you know, a boost. Not, like, you know, in money, but I'm just saying, like, a, a push. There you go. I doubt that extremely. But So, so it's kind of obvious that Paige was going to win in the first place. Um, another thing that, uh, well, what else? Yeah, the match I didn't even see either, um, but I know that Paige won. It looked like a good match, but, you know, I, sorry for anyone that's watching, but it, it was, it looked like an okay match. I'm, I'm just gonna give it, like, a free. Um, the last match of the night, ooh, this is when again, it, this is where it gets interesting. I can't even talk. Um, Daniel Bryan versus Kane. Bree was not involved in this match, and... Either, neither was Triple H, neither was Stephanie McMahon. Luckily, it was just Kane and Bryan. The match started out with Bryan just instantly attacking Kane. It kind of failed. They were going back and forth. Um, I could tell that um, the, uh, the steel chair was used a lot. The kendo stick was used a lot. Uh, Bryan went for an announcing table. And then they, uh, Bryan used the crowbar. He used the shovel he, he took from Triple H. Um, what else did happen? Oh, they went to, like, the backstage and everything like that. It was a crazy match. It was a crazy match. Um, when they went to the backstage, Brian knocked out, uh, I'm just gonna even play my game. Uh, yeah, no edited, hashtag no edit. Anyways, um, Brian went to the outside with Kane, literally into the parking lot. Brian hit Kane with the crowbar, I believe, six times. And uh, when he hit him with the crowbar, Kane got knocked out. If I'm far away from my mic is because I'm changing up a match, even though, you know, I don't really need to. Because the video's almost over. Anyways, um, so Brian, like, moved to the outside. And, uh, yeah, like I said, he knocked out Kane. He, uh, what else did he do? Yeah, once he knocked out Kane, he put him on the forklift. And once he was on the forklift, um, uh, once he was on the forklift, he was, uh, literally pushed. Not, how can I really put this? Brian drove the forklift with Kane on it. There you go. And he just put him into the ring. Uh, once that was, um, done, once he, you know, uh, Kane was put into the ring and everything like that, you know, they kept fighting, and then, um, Kane brought out that, um, flaming table, literally. And I could hear in the background that, like, flaming table. So I was expecting that it was going to happen. Um, but I feel, but here's the thing that was crazy. I remember in 2004 watching a match, and Mick Foley was about to light something on fire, and then, like, Eric Bischoff just stopped it. Yeah, in the PG era, you know, they, obviously, let, let's just have it happen. Um, the flaming table didn't last long for the match. Literally, it lasted for, like, what, 10 seconds? But that's probably the reason why, so the place doesn't go on freaking fire. Um, so, yeah, that happened. And once um, the flaming table was put out, uh, Kane was, like, literally just, like, fidgeting back into the ring. Hit with the uh, solid B plus knee, and the match was over. So there you go. Brian retains his um, uh, unified championship, the World Heavyweight Championship, as they call it. Uh, Bad News Barrett won the um, Intercontinental Championship. Paige retained her Divas title. No tag team matches. Uh, El Torito won the WLC match. Uh, what else happened? What else happened? 
Oh, the Shield defeated Evolution. Uh, Alexander Rusev defeated Truth and Woods. And that's all I can freaking remember. So, yeah, guys, uh, this is the Real Jack Star, and I'm signing out. So, like, favorite, comment. I'll see you next time in the future. I'll try my best to get some, uh, try to get some, uh, more Smackdown vs. Raw 2K14 out. But, uh, currently, um, working on, you know, live streams and everything like that. So, f um, watch me on Twitch. Follow me on Twitter so you can know when I'm live streaming, because I doubt I know instantly. And, uh... Yeah, do all that shebang, and then I'll just see you guys next time.